Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel and today I want to talk a bit about why I wear camo and earth tones when I go outdoors, but why I also carry high visibility gear and clothing and equipment with me at all times. So what's with the duality and what are the use cases, the pros and cons of both and how with this setup I can actually be extremely visible as well. So stay tuned. Let's start off with a story. A couple of years ago, I got a comment on some of my video saying that I know nothing about the outdoors or hiking and backpacking because I'm wearing this kind of stuff. And that person didn't leave any reasons why that might be. And other people got pretty mad about him and about that comment that, hey, we all should wear what we, whatever we want basically when going outdoors. And I completely agree. But I like to think that that comment came from a good place anyway. And maybe he was thinking about the scenarios where high visibility or bright colors can be helpful. However, I'm telling you that there's plenty of reasons why wearing a bit of camouflage and earth tones is very useful when going outdoors. While I'm not perhaps a big advocate of wearing full camo BDUs and things like that, but I can see the value of that so if, if uh, wearing military gear is your thing, that's completely fine. That gear is usually a bit tougher and definitely made to endure those field conditions, so good for you. But over the years I've had a bit of camo here and there, and currently I still have this um, jacket, UF Pro Striker XT in Kona Camo. It's a bit faded away as all gear or clothing seems to fade away in, in, in the sun over the years. And then I have this Everly stock rain cover here in uh, Doppelganger Mountain camo pattern. But the patterns themselves aren't really important. But why I mention this is that camouflage is meant to trick the eye, whether that is human eye or then animal eye. And they do work a bit differently uh, for different purposes, but in the end what that accomplishes is that I can get to be a lot closer to the nature. And in a way, that's also my method of respecting outdoors. I don't go out here in bright, screaming colored spandex or whatever. In subtle earth tones and camouflage, I become part of the great outdoors, in my opinion. And that's at least how I like to think. And also, I get to avoid people. <laughs> so even during um, let's say the main hiking season on some busy trails, if I want to take a break, I can go just a few meters off the trail, sit down and be still and people can walk right past me and never even notice I'm there. So that's very helpful in my opinion. And secondly, it also gets me closer to animals, even big animals. So not just like um, birds or whatever, but also deer. I gotten quite close to a lot of them and, and other types of animals as well. So just being a bit more down to earth, almost literally, at least with the colors, does help becoming a bit more incognito. And um, in, in my own way, that's, that's also respectful, I think, towards nature. And of course, this is exactly what people used to wear outdoors until maybe 30, 40 years ago, 80s did something and people started to wear bright colors afterwards. But anyway, like if you go back far enough, what people wore were thick wool equipment and clothing and everything was uh, gray, brown, earth tones in general. And not necessarily because of the camouflage value, but those were just kind of the natural choices, no pun intended. And then afterwards, uh, after uh, war periods, a lot of military surplus started to uh, find its way also with the outdoor community and in their use. And in some sense, what I'm wearing and what I'm doing is um, just an extension of that old, old trend. Now, that said, there's definitely uses and places where you want to be visible. And my thinking is that by default, I'm going to look like this, but if needed, either in the case of emergency or in case of 
hunting season and hunting areas I want to be more visible, I can do it with this exactly the same kit. So I'm not carrying anything extra to accomplish that. So let's take a look at those things next. All right, so I think this is a good place to start. You can see here, you now my rucksack has turned into extremely big visible target. And in fact, I'm not carrying two different rain covers. This is the same rain cover, but it is reversible. Very handy way of doing both things. So being down to earth and stealthy and also high visibility or have high visibility when needed. Now this pack cover alone pretty much accomplishes everything we need in terms of being visible if we choose to be. However, there's plenty of smaller things with me at all times that can be useful as well. Remember the sitting pad that I made? Same story applies. Da -da -da -da. This is now a bright rectangular shape, definitely out of place in nature. Good signal panel in itself. And talking about signaling, there's few things in my kit bag that could be used for signaling purposes. Of course, a good compass is a must for any outdoorsman with a single mirror. But then, on the other hand, if you see when I open this up, this back panel is orange as well. This is maybe a bit far-fetched, but I like to think that why not have this kind of passive orange signal here as well. Let's take a scenario where I need to be rescued for some reason or another. Maybe I'm still conscious, leaning against something, maybe a tree. If I'm feeling like I'm losing energy or I need to simply just take a nap or whatever, this is passively signaling. I can put this on the other side of the tree, passively signaling, and I can leave this open and taking a nap. My orange panel here is also passively signaling all the time. <laughs> Sorry, dog went crazy. You need to check what is going on. Not sure, I think a bug stinged him on the nose. But anyway, what was I saying? So yeah, passive orange signal panel. And in many cases, passive signaling is um, it's a no-brainer for me. It takes no energy. It's, in many cases, if you do not know where the help is coming from, can be just as effective as active signaling. And you can do it even in your sleep. So why not? But bright colors are not the only things that attract human eye. Other things, what I mentioned was rectangular shapes or sharp angles also attract our eyes because that's what we've used to seeing all the time in houses and buildings and so forth. But movement also attracts attention from animals as well as humans. And one excellent, excellent thing to have is even if you don't have a Trangia cook set, get one of their bags. This is for the basic Trangia set. Comes with a piece of uh, cordage. Now, if you hang this from a tree branch and just let it be there. It will move around even in the slightest breeze. It's bright orange and that color plus movement is extremely effective. And I know this because I tried this actually a few years ago during survival course that I took. I used this to mark our camp location when we went in different directions to gather supplies like wood and, and insulation materials and things like that. So I left this quite high up by our camp and we could all safely go in our separate directions and then find our way back to the camp because of this. So tried and proven to be effective and good thing to have. Doesn't weigh anything so you can pack your gear, your own cook set or whatever inside of this bag. Very useful for signaling purposes as well. And then lastly about signaling is of course night time. And bright orange color, while it's still more visible during low light conditions than earth tones, alone doesn't do much. So that is the reason why I have few reflective things scattered around. Um, actually, first of them were here. My latest additions are these bright orange squares that 
reflect light. Then, just a quick note, these patches here on top, while they look very um, kind of subdued in terms of colors, the black material underneath reflects all light, so visible light as well as infrared light. Same goes for my first aid kit. It reflects visible light, all the red color here, and then it also has glow-in-the-dark um, edges in, in the um, cross and text there. I'm not trying to hide from anyone in the sense that I would try to be as stealthy as possible, but I want to be visible when needed and also connect with the nature while I don't feel like I need to be more visible like this. So in summer there's definitely time and place for both camo and high visibility stuff and I would strongly encourage you to implement both. If you're one of those people who are really big in military gear and stuff like that, this is also a great example for you that using military gear, full camouflage and all that is great, but you can still have high visibility stuff with you that can be deployed just in case. And the very concept of single panels comes from the military, so they do go hand in hand. So that's everything from us this time. You've been watching Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. This is Rokka, working as my backup today. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about camouflage and earth tones and high visibility gear. If you have more tips for me and for others how to become visible when needed. Let me hear those. I will see you all in the next one.